So whether you be replacing a power window motor, a regulator, or a complete assembly, one of the first things we need to do is get the door panel off. Now, every different vehicle has maybe a little different method of, of getting the door panel off. Some of them have kind of an L bracket that are usually plastic, so we wanna be careful. We don't wanna pull straight out on those or we're gonna snap those off. Other ones have what's referred to as a Christmas tree retainer, which are kind of angled in. And those ones we do want to pull out. So the first thing we need to do is kind of examine the door panel here and look at places where screws might be hidden. Most doors are going to have several large retainers, which you're going to either unbolt or unscrew to get them out. And quite often you're going to find those around the door handle area where, where we need some extra strength there. Well, in this particular vehicle here, I see that there's actually one hidden behind the door lock here. So I'm going to pop a little cover off that. Might use a little pick for that. I'm also going to maybe pop up the, the, the window switch here in excess and see if there's anything underneath that. Uh, I see there's a little panel here by the door handle, which I'm going to pop out. Then I'm going to kind of work my way around. And I'm going to even employ the use of several other handy tools in the toolkit from ACI, which are going to allow me to kind of get behind that door panel, maybe put a little bit of pressure on. And then I'm also going to use my, my handy little flashlight here, which also extracts. It's got a curved head. It's going to allow me to inspect around there and see exactly what we're going to have to do to get this door panel off. So that's really step number one. Once you verify that you do need a power window motor or regulator assembly, is we got to get the door panel off here. So let's dig in on this one. All right, so now that I got the bolt out of here, I got a couple of the trim panels off. Actually, I located two more bolts behind the door handle here. As I mentioned, that's kind of the bulky part of the door, so we need extra reinforcement. Once I got all those bolts out, now I went around the bottom of the door using one of my little tools and was able to wedge that in there. And now I'm gonna gently apply a little bit of pressure on here, kind of work my way around. And this one actually has the pop out type snaps. So I just need to pull directly out on it and get them, get them all loosened up. And then another thing important to note is that the window, it's much easier if the window's all the way down. Now quite often if a regulator snaps, a cable breaks, the window's down anyways. And I've seen all kinds of contraptions where people try and uh, wedge the window up for whatever reason. Um, it, it's much easier if the window is all the way down. Now, sometimes if the motor quits, well, we're forced to operate in the condition where it's at. But in this case, I've got the window all the way down. And so I'm able to free my door panel up, kind of lift on the bottom edge. And that's going to allow it to rotate up and release it from the upper lip. That's kind of holding it in place there. Now, once I get it free, I'm going to move any of my wiring out of here and also disconnect the inner door handle cable. Just like that, I've got the door panel off. Now we're ready to dig in, remove the sound and vapor barrier here, and get in to replace components. So now in order to replace my driver's side front power window motor, I've got the door panel off, I've got the sound and vapor barrier off. Now we can see the motor right here. Well. One of the first things I'm gonna to have to do is disconnect the electrical connector. And so I'll see if I can get my thumb popped in there and remove it. If not, I always like to use a little pick or screwdriver. There, we've got it unplugged now. So we've got no more electrical power going to the motor. But now I need to remove a couple bolts to gain access to this. So we've got one bolt here and I'm gonna loosen the regulator so I can move this away because of course, the motor's actually on the back side of it. So in many instances, I'm actually gonna have to remove the entire regulator up out of the vehicle. Let's see if we can do this one in the vehicle. If not, we're gonna do it right on the bench.
All right, after a little bit of messing around here, I got everything unbolted and it was still difficult to get the, the regulator all the way out. So I had to uh, mess around and kind of force this thing up to get it into place here, get the window lifted up. So what I'm gonna do now is there's two pinch bolts holding the glass to the regulator. So I'm gonna go take my 10 millimeter socket and remove them a minute, which is gonna allow me to get the regulator completely out of the vehicle and access the motor on the bench. So even here, I don't have to completely remove the bolts, just simply loosen them. As they're held in place, kind of with a plastic pad pinching onto the window. So as we can see right here, you can see that bolt I had to loosen up and here's that plastic pad, which I loosened up pinching the window. Well, once we've got the regular assembly out of the vehicle, now really all I have to do is simply remove these three bolts that go into the motor and kind of hold the regulator gear and cable assembly onto the, the motor. So I'm gonna remove these three here and I'm gonna use caution. I don't want this whole thing to come unraveled or, or uncoiled in there. So I'm gonna use some caution when I pull these three screws to carefully separate the motor from the regulator assembly. So we can see here, I've got it on the bench, using just a quarter inch ratchet with an eight millimeter socket to get these loose. That's gonna allow me to separate the motor from the regulator. So the first two you can see kind of gets it away from the bracket here. Now there might be a little bit of spring tension on this unit because of the, the adjuster here. But once we release that, now I'm able to cautiously separate this. So now I have all the screws out. I'm going to cautiously separate this and I'm gonna use a little bit of a, a screwdriver in here to help ensure that the, the winding actually comes up with this plastic housing. So now we can see we got it all the way out of there. Otherwise, I didn't want this center piece to come falling out and the cable to, to uh, come unwound. So I'll now transfer pieces over to my new motor. You can see the alignment tab pops up in the middle there. And so first things first, I'm gonna start this screw it's off to the side. That's gonna ensure that everything's held in place here. Now, once I've got that to kind of secure it, now I can go back and mount the motor back to the metal regulator assembly here. And again, we're gonna have a little bit of a spring tension. We'll feel right here. But once I get it lined up, now I can drop my other bolts in place. I'll just kind of get it started there. Then I will take my third one, which as you can expect, is gonna have the most amount of tension on it now that we've got everything put back into place. Once all three are started, I feel safe driving them down and then we're ready to mount this regulator assembly with a new motor in it back in the vehicle. Okay, well now that we're back to the vehicle, we've got our new motor mounted to the regulator. Now we kind of re reverse the, the removal process. So I'm going to insert the motor in here and then I'm gonna get the other side kind of worked in that's the nice thing about these cable drives. They're relatively flexible and we can get them in place where we need them to be. So now I've got it relatively close. The first thing I'm gonna do is go back in 
mount the glass to the regulator. Now it's pretty straightforward. You can, you can usually see exactly where it came off of. So I've got it inserted there. Now I'm just gonna take my 10 millimeter socket and again, hand tighten this. We don't wanna crank it down too hard or we're obviously gonna damage the glass. So I'm gonna tighten both of those down and then I'm gonna go ahead and get my regulator in place, mount it back to the door, plug it in and let's test it and see if it works. Now, as I was installing this, I ran across a, a little tip I wanna share with you all is, you know, previously I had tightened the glass down a little too tight and so my holes weren't lining up properly. So you see on the top here, these are slotted. And so really the intent is that you just loosen the bolt and you slide it up and out of place. Well, in this instance, I went ahead and removed the bolts. And so when I assembled everything back together, my holes weren't quite lining up. So in that instance, all I'd do was go back to the glass and simply loosen it just a little bit. And what that allowed me to do is line up my holes here so now I can insert my bolt holding the regulator in place. Now everybody's happy and I can kind of snug down my glass again and continue tightening my bolts. It's very important that we have everything lined up and moving properly. And so that's one thing as soon as we power this up and test it out, we wanna make sure it goes up and down freely with no binding. We certainly don't wanna burn out our new uh, lift motor here. All right, now that everything's bolted in place again, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my motor. Then, before I install the door panel, I just wanna ensure that we've done the job properly. So I'm going to plug in my connectors here. So I'm gonna then go ahead and power up the vehicle. No need to turn it on, but I'm just gonna move my window up and down. And there, I can verify that my window does go up and down. Moves relatively smoothly. Now really all that's left is put that vapor barrier back on. I'm going to line up the door panel. Again, it's very important that I line up those clips properly. Insert all the clips. Insert my mounting bolts here to hold everything in place. And then plug everything in. Just like that, we've gone ahead and replaced the power lift motor. In this example was a 2008 GMC Yukon Denali. All right, well now the job is done. I've got the door panel installed in place here. We've got our trim pieces in. It's all snapped together and in place. <laughs> One thing I wanna do again is double check, make sure everything works. Now, before I hand the job back to the customer, one thing I wanna do is go ahead and clean the windows here. You know, I'm wearing some gloves, so hopefully I don't have too many fingerprints, but yet it's still best interest of the customer to do a professional job and clean the windows off for them, exceed their expectations, clean up any, any grime that might be on the door panel here. Remember, you're the last one that touched it, so we gotta leave it better than what we found it. So a couple key takeaways, whether we're replacing the motor, the regulator, or the complete assembly here, well, first off, we need to get the door panel off. Use caution. You know, over time, this stuff gets brittle and, and hard. So, so go ahead and use the proper tools and the tool kits available to you to get this apart. Then when you remove the components, install the new ones. After verifying that we've got power and ground going to the motor, of course. But then we also need to uh, realign the window. Make sure it's moving in the track properly. Maybe even in some cases you have to lubricate it to keep it going up and down properly. Once everything's adjusted, we can do final assembly, reinstall our door panel here, retest, clean, and the job is done. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of replacing window lift motors, regulators, or complete assemblies. Thanks for tuning in.